My marriage has survived lies, infidelity, drugs, alcohol, obsessions with work, working out, and women. My name is Coach Bruce, and I'm a life coach for ADHD parents. Uh, I saw a video earlier, I think last night, in the middle of the night, and it was Alex Hermosi talking about how people who are fat shouldn't give advice on how to get fit, people who are single shouldn't give advice on how to be in relationships, and people who are broke shouldn't give advice on how to get rich. Well. I'm broke, I'm fat, so I'm out on those fronts. But I have been in the same relationship or in the relationship with the woman I'm with for almost 20 years. And I think that I've learned some things. Most everything I've learned has been from fucking up. I've made a lot of mistakes in this time. And it's important to, to, to get that I don't think I have it all figured out. But I have learned enough to be able to help somebody else who is struggling in their marriage is struggling as a parent, is struggling to find the balance to be able to breathe and grow and envision that there's something better for their relationship. I get, I can think back 10 years. No, yeah, it's right about 10 years now, maybe 10 to 12 years whenever I couldn't breathe. I couldn't see how this relationship that I was in could be anything more than what it was. I was drowning. I think back to the year I had my affair and I'm really depressed first off because I married my best friend and to cheat on your best friend is the worst, most disgusting, most pitiful, weakest thing that you can do as a husband. And I did that and I never thought I would. And what I learned from that experience was, for one, my wife loves me more than I deserve. She's a much more patient and gracious person than I ever considered possible. But also that eventually your lies will catch up with you. They always do. Not the lie of having the affair. That was a whole lie upon itself. But the reason why the affair happened was... I was telling myself the lie that the trouble I was in in my relationship wasn't my fault. I put, I blamed everything that was happening on somebody else. The reason why I was struggling as a parent was because my wife wasn't doing enough to support me. The reason why I was struggling at work was because my wife made it hard for me to leave the house. The reason why everything was always her fault. It was my parents' fault for not doing this. And at no point did I ever take any responsibility. And I told myself that lie that none of it was my fault. And I believed it. I was a great liar. I was a better liar to myself than anybody else. And so as I'm telling these lies and I'm getting really comfortable in the idea of it being my wife's fault that I'm unhappy, I was in a weakened state. I was angry at her for something she hadn't actually done, but something I'd made myself believe was true. And in that weakened state, somebody said nice things to me. And because somebody said nice things and had no baggage, and I mean, she had baggage, but she had no baggage with me. We had no history. There was no confusing conversations about who needs to do this work and who's not pulling their load and who was being weak in the relationship. There was just nice words. And because I was so wrapped up in that lie of it not being my fault, I even sold myself on deserving something outside of a relationship. I deserve this. I deserve this release. This wasn't a full board sexual affair, but it was enough of a release to where I felt better when I got home for a while. I was able to be a better parent to my kids, my newborn. Well, I'm sorry. It was a toddler, a very young toddler, a four-year-old. And then my wife was pregnant during the time this was happening. I was a scumbag who cheated on the pregnant wife with the two kids at home. I stayed late at work, supposedly making extra money to be able to provide for my family when really... I was searching for a release from the pressure of the life that wasn't my fault. 
And it's hard to talk about because it was my fault. It was all my fault. I had entered the relationship in a lie. I had met her in a lie. And I had lied the entire time we'd been together. I had never once allowed her to know who I actually was. She didn't know what I was afraid of. She didn't know my vulnerabilities. She had no idea what I had hidden inside of me because I had locked it away years before and refused to open myself up to her. I had hid my emotions. See, going back into high school, I used to get so ragey that I would black out and I would do things that I couldn't remember. And I was afraid that I would hurt somebody. I was, it was possible that I might have might have already hurt somebody. Not that I might hurt somebody coming up, but there are amounts of time that I can't, I still can't recover that I don't know what happened. And the people who were involved have been gracious enough to spare me the details, but I don't feel good about it. And because of that, I disconnected from the rage and the anger that I had, isolated from it and tucked that person in a cage, locked the keys and never looked back. So whenever I met the love of my life, I was a half a person. I'd hidden my rage, but I'd also hidden my joy. To think of the person who was able to enamor this woman with half of his joy hidden says how, how big of a person I could have been had I not hidden who I was. But I caught her with the lie. And she went along with it and she fell in love with me. And I persisted with that lie for, I don't know, 10, I mean, I guess our the affair was like five to seven, I'm, I'm terrible with time, but five to seven years into our marriage, almost eight or nine years into our relationship. And that whole time I had hidden who I really was. And whenever it came to these these faults that I blamed on my wife, all these things that I said were her fault. I never even told her those. I hid those from her as well. So I'm carrying all this baggage around, all the things that are her fault, and never giving her a chance to defend herself or to correct my reality and tell me how it actually was. It's like fighting a blind person in a boxing match and then tying their arms behind their back. She never had a chance. Luckily, her heart is so much bigger than mine, and we were able to push through that affair. And even still, I only unlocked a portion of who I was and showed her some of what that emotion I kept held so deep down below was so she wouldn't leave. And even still, I didn't really tell the truth. It wasn't for another five years that I actually started to let her know what I'd been hiding. And at that point, I was so disconnected to it that it was just the description of a truth. As I told her about the rage I used to have and these deep fears and my fear of abandonment and the trauma that I was raised with that had deeply shaped me, I had no connection emotionally to it. I was able to describe all of the anger and the fear and the shame and the guilt and feel little to nothing. That's that's not right. That's wrong. And part of it is being disconnected because I buried it so deep and was so so disconnected from it for so long, but I was also medicated for 20 years. They happen to run pretty concurrently, so ADHD medication makes it easier to manage your emotions by numbing the connection between you and how you feel. I'm still navigating this. I'm still learning how to feel the feelings that I've been talking about for a couple of years now, but I realize now that the reason why I haven't taken massive growth from sharing these truths is because I didn't feel the emotion of sharing it. I didn't feel the shame and embarrassment of telling my truth. I just told it as if I was reading the telephone book. And now as I'm going back and sharing some of these truths and feeling some of these emotions, I realize how much I've been missing out on. I've been getting like a tenth of the emotional spectrum that exists for the last 20 years of my life. But the things that have made me 
stronger is my wife allowing me to tell the truth. To every time, learn how to tell the truth. To come more and more and closer and closer to what the truth is. And often it is my truth. It's not even the full truth yet. It's just what the truth is I understand it. Because I had lied to myself so much that sometimes I couldn't tell the difference. And as I come to what I think is the actual truth, I'm only able to handle it because I have her with me. I am not the strongest man in the entire world or else I wouldn't have lied every day of my life for 20 years. But as I'm strong enough to face this now, I still do need her support. And the thing that I can share that I've learned through all this is all of it, every single time that I was able to uncover something myself and tell my wife the truth first, she was there to support me and make me see that I was enough and that I was worthy of love and that she wouldn't abandon me. And all my fears were self-manufactured from my trauma. So that's the biggest lesson. I'm going to stop talking now because I went way over, but tell the truth. That that's that's the big lesson. Tell the truth and it will set you free. Don't let your wife go 15 years without knowing who you are. And have the hard conversations. They're important. The hard conversations that we have finally started having, the committed time that we've taken to share in those hard emotions to develop with each other has made all the difference. So, if you are struggling with sharing yourself with your spouse or your children, it's important that you get in line with your truth. And I can help you with that. Go take the ADHD Aimless Life self-assessment. It is linked in my bio and it is linked in the description. And it will help you see the next steps that I offer to start to take control of your life and stop being a bystander, to stop lying and start living. Have a great day. I'll talk to you tomorrow.